Okay, thanks for uh, joining this uh, very short uh, introduction presentation of uh, Neo Charge. Now we shift to a natural refrigerant. Sorry, I mean, for the ones that are not. So we are shifted to ammonia system. Uh, we love ammonia. We want to, I would say, to extend uh, the possibility to use an ammonia system more and more in the future. And actually, the technology that uh, that I'm going to introduce to you, Neo Charge, is going exactly in this direction, just to provide the possibility to make uh, ammonia system easier and with uh, using a much, much less charge. Bitcoin. My name is Lorenzo Angolani, and I'm responsible of Neo Charge project inside of Downforce. So, what is Neo Charge? Neo Charge is a new solution, is a new simple technology for uh, reducing the charge in an ammonia industrial refrigeration system. How? So, first, uh, typically, ammonia industrial refrigeration systems are overfeed the system, so pump system, and the factor that is, uh, we we'll say, um, affecting the charge, the charge of the total charge of the system is the recirculation rate. Uh, simply because, uh, you know, the, in, a, in, a, in a pump system, the charge is uh, concentrated in the low pressure side uh, of the system. So the recirculation rate uh, is a factor that provides you an idea regarding if your, if your uh, system is using more or less charge. Typically, the recirculation rate uh, that... Uh, it's not working. It's not working, the point, sorry. Okay. Okay, typically, the recirculation rate the designer are using in ammonia industrial refrigeration system is something between two and four. Neo charge is uh, reducing the recirculation to the lowest possible rate for maintaining the same cooling capacity. So that means that uh, it's making work in the air cooler shift in the direction of the saturation point, represented by the point two in the enthalpy graph. Oh, there. In this graph, you can see why it's not working. Oh, now it's working. In this graph, you can see exactly what does it mean to reduce the recirculation rate in a traditional pump system, moving from a circulation rate of three in the blue bar to a circulation rate that is 1.1. And of course, in the area where the circulation rate is affected, that means in the liquid pipe, in the, in the evaporator, in the section wet side, in the, in, the, in the receiver, for example, you can see the different, in the different part of the system, moving from a circulation trail rate of three to one point now. So it's a huge differentiation in kilogram that the system is using. But new charge can be even used not just in connection to traditional through the system, but even in connection to direct expansion system. So ammonia is, I would say, direct expansion system in connection to ammonia. It's not just a trend because we have uh, many already customers, not maybe in Europe, but maybe in US, in Australia, using this technology in connection to ammonia. Simply because it's the technology that can reduce half the charge. If in a flooded, just reducing the circulation rate, we can arrive to 45%, it is a huge number. In a direct expansion system, we can go to 50% charge direction. So it's the system that, are, that is reducing most the charge. But Neo Charge, what is doing? is improving the performance of the DX evaporator to the same level of the flooded one, just cutting the superheat to zero. So not because it's not using the superheat to control the expansion valve. So in any kind of system, a new charge is providing a benefit. What are the elements connected to the new charge? So, I mean, if we want to control the recirculation rate, we need to read the vapor quality. So we need the sensor. And this is the core in the technology. We need the sensor to read the vapor quality, of course. But we need even, uh, if we want to remove uh, the a super heat, we need even to read the super heat, but this is easier because this is something that we do, we do regularly. So sensor, we need an electronic control 
to read the sensor and to, of course, providing a good signal for controlling a motorized valve. But this is, we are very expert in doing control valves. So the solution, NeoCharge solution, is made with the sensor, electronic controls, and valves. Uh, I say it is a simple, the core technology is a simple uh, sensor for uh, reading the vapor quality in the range that we need to control because I'm actually I'm not going to control a circulation rate that is uh, six or seven. So uh, we have to reduce the circulation rate. So that means that we are controlling this range of vapor quality. So we have developed a sensor that uses a very simple technology is the heat conductivity. So it's a, you know, there is a big difference between uh, cooling heat transfer coefficient and so liquid heat transfer coefficient and gas heat transfer coefficient. The difference is a factor of 10, of course, in the positive, in the, in the liquid side. We have developed a very compact heated sensor. It's a heated temperature sensor and is fixed directly to the evaporator, not in the section pipe, not in the collector, directly in one of the pipe on the coil, in the coil, a small pipe in the coil. So it's outside, it's not intrusive. So it's placed uh, fixed outside the pipe. So I say it is a heated sensor. We provide a fixed amount of energy, of heating, and of course, on the other side of the pipe, there is the refrigerant that is providing a cooling effect. Now it's cooling down the sensor, more or less, depending on the amount of liquid that you have in the pipe. So we are using the temperature signal to understand how much liquid and gas we have in the pipe. So it's the vapor quality. And this is the signal that we are getting from the, from the heated sensors. As you can see, is representing the vapor quality. Actually, it's not a direct measurement of the vapor quality because we are using the heat transfer coefficient to read the vapor quality. So there is a correlation in between. The electronic controls, now we are going to the electronic controls. Actually, for engaging the signal and using for controlling the valve, in just in the first time that we power on the electronic controls, just in the first one, the system is running using the superheat signal. We have two signals, it's a dual signal. At the beginning, just in the first power one, we are using the standard superheat. We make it running for a few minutes, we create a stable superheat and we start to power on the heater. We open more and more the valve, the superheat is start to go down, down, and when we reach the flooded point, the algorithm that we have developed in the electronic control is able to detect that we start to go flooded and shift the signal, and we use the heat sensor signal to enter in the, in the two-phase area and to control the valve according to this, to this signal. What does it mean to have a system not controlling the circulation rate or fully controlling the circulation rate. If you think how we design the system now, uh, traditionally we have a pump that has a fixed speed, fixed liquid mass flow rate, and the evaporator just control it with the regulating valve with a fixed and operating degree, very easy. And consider that this system is uh, theoretically designed with a circulation rate of three. You know, I mean, three is just a theoretical circulation rate. The real one usually is much, much bigger. And because it's depending by, by what? It's depending if uh, all the evaporators are running in the same time. Hopefully not. Some are working, some are off. And of course, the one that is on is receiving even the flow rate from the one that is not working. So that is improving, improving the circulatory circulation rate. The load is ever impacting the circulation rate. I will show you later how. The ice, uh, the air temperature. So, I mean, the recirculation rate is never fixed, it's constantly changing, and it's always much, much bigger compared to the theoretical one that we are using for designing the system. Here you have the translation in kilogram. What does it mean? Yes. In uh, consider a 100 kilowatt evaporator running uh, at minus 35, the internal volume is 100 liter 
connected to a pipe, a section pipe that is 10 meters long. Originally, the, uh, the charge was expected to be 36 kilograms using the void traction equation. The real one was 44 kilograms. Moving to controlling and moving the recirculation to 1.5, we are just using 23 kilograms with a saving of 21. You say, and why do I have to save refrigerant? Because the system is already running. Some, uh, for example, uh, cold chain company, they say that this one is an amazing benefit because, you know, a cold room, a logistic cold room stay alive for 20, 30, 40 years. In this time frame, they are enlarged, enlarged, enlarged. This is a way to make retrofitting the system evaporator and to use the saved charge to expand the system, to add extra capacity, extra cold room. The impact of the uh, capacity reduction in the recirculation rate. And think here, for example, to the freezing tunnel, because I think this, this graph is exactly representing the, 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 the behavior of a freezing tunnel. They started, for example, theoretically with a circulation rate of three. It's not running this at full load, but you know, the load is not constant in a freezing tunnel. It's changing. And most of the time it's going down and down and down. When it's a 50% part load, the recirculation rate is moving from three to six. Six, it means that the evaporator is mainly full of liquid. It's not an exchanger, it's a receiver actually. So that is what's happening. And this liquid has to be removed and it has to push back to the separator. Who is providing this energy is the compressor, we know. And we know that uh, not many, but some of the freezer are running not a minus 45, but a minus 48 or 49 due to this fact. So NeoCharge is keeping fixed the recirculation rate. This is the the, the, green, the green line in any condition, in any load condition. I mentioned that this, uh, this, um, this system can manage even uh, direct expansion in connection to ammonia. Yes, ammonia is a really worst refrigerant in being controlled using the superheat. And we know, we traditionally we are using, in direct expansion system, we are using superheat to control the expansion bump. Please, don't do with ammonia. Because ammonia, as uh, compared to any other refrigerant, has a huge latent heat. If it, this one, if you are thinking regarding the enthalpy curve, if this one is uh, 134 a for example, this, this big is, is, is ammonia. And what is impacted is big uh, latent heat uh, in, uh, in the superheat. Just consider, for example, an evaporator of 100 kilowatt, same 100 kilowatt at minus 30. If I want to create 10 Kelvin superheat in this evaporator, I have to remove six kilogram per hour of ammonia. It's nothing. So six kilogram per hour, it's nothing. If I want to keep five Kelvin, it's three kilogram per hour. Every second I have to, you know, I have to, to, to dig in some grams of ammonia, actually. This is the reason why if we are using ammonia in DX and using the standard super for control the expansion valve, it will not be stable because it's extremely impossible to control the superheat. <laughs> NeoCharge, what it's doing, is not using the standard superheat because as I mentioned before, it's using a signal coming from the two-phase area and make you running the evaporator without superheat, zero superheat. In this way, what we have, we have the same capacity of the flooded evaporator, but with the lowest char possible charge. We think that ammonia DX using NeoCharge can be a kind of second life of ammonia because they, have, they can get the two main benefits, maximum low charge, 50% 50% compared to flooded and the same efficiency of the flooded evaporator. So this is the main benefit of, uh, of NeoCharge. And you can see here in this graph, sorry, the system running, this is a real test that we are running here in Germany. Uh, I mean, the, you can see the superheat 
just affected if we are controlling the standard superheat expansion valve. And when it started the neo control, the neo charge control, you can see it goes zero and flat. And the benefit impact in the evaporating temperature, in the air, in the air, in the air temperature as well. So just to sum up a little, because uh, we are going quite to the end of this, uh, this discussion, maybe you have even some question as well. So neo charge, you can see here the solution is the electronic controls plus the sensor is a plug and play solution. Yeah. So it requires really few, few uh, settings, uh, few parameters to run. It's uh, for any kind of system, DX or pump. And when I say pump, I say every kind of injection, any kind of feeding, bottom feeding, top feeding, side feeding, anyone, any kind of evaporator with any kind of pipe. So stylus steel, aluminum, carbon steel. We have almost closed the test with the copper pipe. And there is no any limitation in refrigerant because we are not connected to, to the refrigerant. No, we are reading the, the, the vapor quality outside. So it's not, there is no any limitation in using this, uh, these electronic controls, uh, uh, neo charge, not just in connection with ammonia, but we get to CO2 or even synthetic refrigerant is a real active control because every evaporator receives exactly the quantity of charge, the quantity of, uh, of, of refrigerant that is required according to the load. That means that if you see in a big system, no, it's a way to balance all the unit that you have in the system because everyone is receiving what is requiring. And you, I know that, uh, for example, when the in the factory where there is a lot of freezing tunnel, the freezing tunnel, they are taking a lot of liquid usually. And mo in most cases, due to this fact, the cold, they are not receiving the liquid, simply because it's, it's in, the, in the freezer. This is the way to solve this issue, because every unit, every evaporator is receiving exactly what is requiring. Uh, and this, uh, I would say, when you say is ideal for retrofit, it means that uh, you, you can see the sensor, I don't have here, I mean, I will invite you to join on the boot to see this. The sensor is extremely compact, can be fixed in any kind of evaporator, cubic, uh, uh, placed on the floor. I mean, any kind of evaporator, we have uh, made a lot of tests already. Mm -hmm. Any kind of a manufacturer that you know has been already uh, qualified uh, with, this, uh, with, this, uh, with this sensor. Testing. <coughs> It's not so new, actually, uh, Neo Charger. We, we started to test it in uh, 2020 in, uh, in Denmark, in DTI, and here we refine, I would say, the software. Um, I, I, I'm going to close, yes. Uh, later on, uh, uh, in 2023, we, we move uh, to real system. And uh, I would say we, we tested, in, of course, in, in different condition, with different kind of evaporator, and uh, in connection to ice cream factory, uh, ice lolly factory, slaughtery house, traditional cold store. And in all these applications, we were able to uh, get the target that the customer was looking for. Actually, we use even this time for making the algorithm is a much more robust because even test phase. Now we are going bigger and bigger. So we are taking complete cold room. We are taking a complete system. Let me just to mention this uh, CO2 DX uh, air to water heat pump that we are testing in uh, since May in DTI in Denmark. Zero superheat, fantastic performance. And uh, I would say every time that we are going to, to engage customer, they are enthusiastic and they want to test. And you can see here how many are already scheduled. So I will invite you, I'm closing here, I will invite you to join me and our, and our team in Downforce because you can see this, uh, uh, this uh, technology, this uh, uh, Neo Charge in a demo unit. Uh, you can play, you see him play with this, uh, with this technology. You can see, you can appreciate the configurator, cool config for making a very fast, easy setting. That's it. Thanks a lot for joining this, uh, this presentation.